fitness has always been there and I've always used it as a bit of a tool um, just to feel better actually mentally I have to be honest with you and then I got cancer and I suppose it's always been a bit of a tool with me like I have now accepted not that I ever was going to be like you know the front runner but the reality is that actually turning up and being part of the race is great now and I don't care if I'm last feeling strong when you like because I do have a lot of operations and actually you want to be able to recover from operations quicker and we know from research that there is like a link in terms of it does help you recover Deborah James, also known as Bow Babe, is one of the hosts of award-winning BBC Radio 5 live podcasts about cancer, you, me and the big C. In fact, the day I spoke to her, she was interviewing other people for that podcast because their latest series has just come out this week and definitely one to go and check out. She is so charismatic, so strong and incredibly inspirational for all that she's going through. She continues to raise awareness to bowel cancer and has saved countless lives whilst doing so. And not only that, through all her operations and her treatments, she continues to put her running shoes on. Fitness has always been important to her and now living with cancer, she uses running as a physical and mental break. How are you? All right. Busy, busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, I kind of, um, just recording actually um, for podcasts. Thank you so much for joining me. You're such an inspirational woman, not only for, you know, the diagnosis you're living through and for all the countless lives you've been saving with your campaigning and, and raising awareness. So in a nutshell, since 2016, could you give a little summary as to what life has been like for the last few years? It's been a roller coaster. So I was diagnosed um, three and a half years ago with metastatic bowel cancer. So stage four bowel cancer, there isn't a stage five. And um, I, unfortunately, the life expectancy for somebody with stage four bowel cancer is pretty low. Um, it's less than 10% will survive the tech for five years. I knew that from the outset and it's quite scary. It's, it's um, Unfortunately, it's the second largest cancer killer in the UK and people uh, assume it only happens to old people or people who drink too much or eat too much red meat uh, or don't exercise enough. Um, and yeah, there's correlations, but only in about half of the cases. And actually, you know, I was under the age of 50. I was vegetarian. Yeah, I like a good glass of wine. But it certainly wasn't the, uh, the cause of my diagnosis. And I don't have any family history of it. And I just had a massive change of bowel habits and was dismissed as somebody who just had IBS. And then by the time I was diagnosed, it meant that my cancer was metastatic. Um, and then over the last three and a half years, I suppose I have just been, I call it splatter tumour really. Um, and without going into it, I've pretty much had anything and everything in terms of treatment. Um, chemo, I've lost count. I, th I think actually, I think I'm, I'm about to approach my 50th cycle of treatment. I was, we were trying to work out if I've surpassed it or not. Um, and, you know, a cycle being kind of like, um, I don't know, one or two week period where you're on chemotherapy or targeted drugs. So I do need to actually look that up because I think I should acknowledge that milestone. Um, I've had multiple operations, including like bowel resections, lung resections, um, just loads of radiotherapy. I've just finished radiotherapy last week, actually, for another splat the tumour case. So, yeah, it's a roller coaster. It's just about keeping alive. I, I, I use, and you, you were correct, I, I use the phrase living with cancer um, because I'm living with cancer, but I'm still living kind of hopefully for a long time <laughs> I just I just really hate well roller coasters like I always have done I, I hate fun fairs like I know some people love them but I'm absolutely petrified of them I don't even go on roller coasters like I rarely go on roller coasters but my life is a roller coaster <laughs> oh well I, I think you're in incredible and you said there about exercise and I know fitness is very important to you and that's one of the reasons I'm very drawn to you not only for everything inspirational you're doing but you're still doing all this fitness and fitness for you is is running it's it's space for you it's good for your mental health and also it helps to fight it helps with the treatment you know with keeping your body healthy yeah. so talk to me about your your fitness so I used to be um I used to be a gymnast um when I was growing up um nothing crazy but I was okay I could you know somersault and all that um 
and so exercise is always kind of a big part of my life and I was training a lot actually um like a large amount when I was growing up so my body's always been used to exercise and then um I kind of you know what it's like you go through phases you either go through the kind of like have kids and gotta like you know get back into fitness or gotta like just cope with the stress of work or whatever it is but but fitness has always been there and I've always used it as a bit of a tool um just to feel better actually mentally I have to be honest with you and then I got cancer and I suppose it's always been a bit of a tool with me like I have now accepted not that I ever was going to be like you know the front runner but the reality is that actually turning up and being part of the race is great now and I don't care if I'm last uh, but there is a very fundamental kind of purpose to it. And I suppose one is to help with my mental state uh, because it really, really does. And I recognise that almost almost daily. It's almost daily in terms of the impact that it has. And then secondly, it's it does reduce side effects. So I've had quite a lot of lung operations. I had eight lung tumours. Um, and actually from a really gross perspective, it essentially improves improves my lung capacity and coughs up all the crap that I have in my lungs <laughs> and it really like helps me to you know actually like live um and uh, that, that that is a major part of it and I think feeling strong when you like because I do have a lot of operations and actually you want to be able to recover from operations quicker and we know from research that there is like a link in terms of it does help you recover so it's it's not like if I'm feeling rubbish I don't beat myself up and you know I might have a day like well I might have weeks where I don't do anything I felt really rubbish off of um, radiotherapy that I had recently um but I would say if I'm feeling good then I kind of at least try at least try yeah there's def definitely you can't give yourself a hard time about that i mean you know it's incredible and, and i follow you online and i know that you you know you, you've been running sort of during treatments and sometimes you're saying yeah i'm feeling pretty physically tired it's like yeah and you're still doing it yeah and half but the thing is is that half the time it's just about putting your trainers on and a lot of people think that they can't do it but i think i'd probably spend an inordinate amount of time in my workout gear probably to trick myself into thinking that I'm sportier than what I actually am um and I think it also then encourages you to be a little bit like a lot of people just assume that they can't run but the reality is that I run probably slower than most people walk and I, I have so many conversations with people who say I can't run and then they go for a run and they're like absolutely smashing it and they're like oh yeah but I can't run any further and I'm like yeah they then have to wait like another five minutes for me to finish I'm just like okay like you just set your bar too high I've got a really low bar I'm just about putting the trainers on and like having the gear and just I just want the medal basically at the end I know what you mean you put your gym clothes on it's like oh I really feel like I've done a workout that's today <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've, I've actually like so today so you can see me because we're obviously um uh, zooming um so I I have my leggings on and I have my gym top on I haven't worked out today <laughs> Battle. day is still young <laughs> the day is still young but weren't you due to do the marathon this year but obviously lockdown and coronavirus yeah. I know you, you're regularly booked in to do the marathon but but treatment stopped you yeah I've wanted to do it for years and I just um well if it's not cancer it's corona really isn't it and it's just it's just can't you just can't predict it like you could you cannot write this so the one time in my life that I probably could have done the marathon like corona got in the way what what is that about hey um so I am obviously trying planning on doing it whenever it comes but it's really hard for someone like me that basically has to then live till that point that's a bit of a challenge because <laughs> I can only predict my life like a couple of months in advance. I can't even predict that, to be honest with you. But I, I thought I had enough foresight to kind of think, uh, well, I probably won't die in the next three months. Well, you know, unless I get hit by a bus or like, you know, I'm really unlucky. And now I just have gone back to a place of just no idea. So hopefully, hopefully I'll be around. The problem, the problem is the reality is that I'm not sure it will go ahead in October because that's what's kind of is the plan. So I've got to I've got to be around till like April. I mean that would be a positive thing. So I'm I'm hoping that Meza will feel nicer when eventually I get to the end of it at some point in life. 
<laughs> it, it really it really will october april we will see you there that'd be incredible but i know you, i can i can appreciate how hard it is to plan but looking back it was about a year ago isn't it you did 10k in your knickers with brian e. gordon yeah exactly almost to the day and i do like um i it's it's good that you remind me of things like this because i i'm i ran 10, 10k at the weekend like a week after radiotherapy and i do beat myself up sometimes about things um just you know when you're having a rubbish day and you've done nothing apart from like netflix or something but then i do forget actually at the same time i do do things like that 10k a couple of days ago i do um you know work pretty much time and i just i, I sometimes forget that you know when you forget actually you're doing okay um but you always just focus sometimes on the like I've done nothing and my ha my house is such a mess today. Can I just tell you, like before I jumped on this call, um, I've pretty much been in this, in this room recording um, for most of the day. And I popped out to get a coffee, just down, I say out, you know, it would be quite nice if I popped to Starbucks, but I, I popped downstairs to get a coffee. And, uh, and there is crap. There is crap from the moment that I open the door to every step, it's like, it's like a bomb. Oh, it's just awful. I just had to like come back in and close the door. I think I'm going to remain here and then I'm going to go out and then I'm going to have a huge glass of wine in the garden and forget about it. <laughs> I, think, I think that's really good. However you can get from the room you're in now to the garden, put blinkers on. <laughs> just feel like, no, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. It's just, and I'm not even a neat freak. I just like, I just, I'm not a neat freak. I just, I just, can't handle it when it's actually a bomb like it's actually like it's like somebody is you would have thought that a burglar's come into my house <laughs> it's like that bad and my house sadly has been burgled quite a few times and and I swear they were tidier than what my kids are <laughs> like really bad <laughs> <laughs> but you do find that you're walking around it's like how is this here why is that there why is that not where it's supposed to be <laughs> I've, just, I've just seen like i've seen like the most oddest things in i totally agree with you I just, I just saw a plate of food in the bathroom and i was thinking why would you why would you put you and eat chips at the same time like of all the things to do you just wouldn't would you it's just not good <laughs> Sounds there's a, a line situation let's do that <laughs> there's, a, there's a line even for, for me and my family but clearly my kids don't don't respect that line <laughs> <laughs> well it sounds like a pretty normal setup i know it's pretty, because no because they can't go to school there's absolutely no time that you can just sort of sort it all out and, and of course like you know with um with us all being in lockdown has that i mean i know you've still been having treatment were you running to your treatments as well sometimes yeah, I do quite often because it's quite a nice route. Like, so I live in South West London and then I can run like along the river to the Marsden, um, depending on the side of the river and stuff. And it's kind of like, I do it because I absolutely hate treatment. I hate, hate, hate treatment. Um, it's as much of a mental challenge um, as it is a physical one. Uh, but basically, as much as I like the Marsden, I do not want to be there. I do not want to be there. And um, so I kind of build things around it to make it kind of less of a deal. Um, so I kind of will run there because then I've just gone for a run, right? Or I'll then I will meet a friend. Well, not now, but genuinely, actually not being able to have that relief, that escapism in regular life, which for me would, would be to like meet with friends afterwards, go for a meal go to theatre whatever it might be and yes I'm very lucky um to have a safe house that I, you know in a nice house that I can that I can be in but actually um when I want to escape my cancer actually I almost have to physically remove myself from 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 somewhere I have to I have to walk along the river or I have to I have to go somewhere um, and I would say that's quite challenging when you're in lockdown because you, you don't have that release anywhere um you just come back home so the only time, so basically going to the hospital is a day out. It is like, you can get dressed up, you can um, put a dress on if you really want, because um, it's the only outing I've been doing recently. I know, it's like, I'm going out, out, where are you going? Treatment. 
them. <laughs> I've actually seen people like wearing like ball dresses to treatment because it's their only um well, you know, gotta get dressed up for something. <laughs> yeah, make make an occasion of it. And um yeah. with everything that I mean you it's it's wonderful the way you talk. You're so authentic and I and I and I've heard you talk many times about when you've been raising awareness and making everything that you're talking about because not many people like to talk about it, particularly bowel cancer. And and you just yeah. say everything that people don't want to say and it's brilliant because then it's letting people say it and it's raising awareness and also saying like you're just saying about running then you know I feel really rubbish when I go to treatment but I get to go running and it's saying you can do these things even when a lot's yeah. against you yeah I think um if you I, I suppose maybe maybe I've just got quite a crude sense of humor so you've got a dark sense of humor or like my my humor is just so crude so I think I think I don't, I don't use that as my coping mechanism but I think the reality is that actually disarming the kind of Britishness about it um, is really important because actually there isn't anything to be embarrassed about um, because ultimately one in two of us are going to get cancer. So it's much better to get it if we are going to get it at an early phase because then we can survive it. Um, but the only way that we're going to do that is with diagnosis and awareness, hence why I talk about it. And then people just not being embarrassed. So one of the, so that they can go to the GPs. And, and one of the key things that I'm finding really heartbreaking about um, about lockdown is just how referrals. So in terms of people going to their doctors to get checked, has dropped by seventy five percent. So it's it's catastrophic in terms of the number of people being diagnosed with cancer late and. As somebody who has a late stage diagnosis it's just not fun so the message loud and clear is that it's still open for business you know gps are still open I, I know that's really challenging it's very easy for me to say that but you know you don't want to survive covid and then get cancer really let's face it gosh i had no idea about the statistics there that's that's frightening 75 percent because you say when lockdown finishes it's just a it's finished, whereas those things continue. A few years ago, you were on a very different course. You were deputy head teacher. And, and, and for those that have life-changing situations happen to them like you did, what would you say to them to keep going and just switching perspectives slightly and still having a really good life? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, I, well, because I was a deputy head, I used to have like a five-year plan and then I used to tick it off. <laughs> And I would say that everything, my whole life was very orchestrated, um, very planned. I mean, I would go off a lesson plan, but I would, everything was there, like the milestones were there. And actually it was quite a good exercise to have to rip it all up. Like I found three, even three and a half years on that I'm still passionate about education, but I would say um, it's kind of, it is a bit scary to have to start again, but then it's almost like trying to, I, I now have gone so much to the extreme where I don't plan ahead. Like I don't, I don't ever plan ahead. And I would say there's positives with that because I have to live in the present. There's, there are some negatives in that I spend too much money. Um, and I just, I always kind of will never put things in my diary I'm always like no well you know I might not be alive we'll, we'll see come back to me later whatever I just I need to start kind of like having a happy medium um but yeah I would say I, the best advice is what my oncologist always says to me which is one day at a time one step at a time and he's you know he, he can never promise what will happen to me because let's face it he doesn't know and if I had predicted three and a half years ago what would have happened to me I wouldn't be here so I kind of have to that's how I live my life I suppose yeah, it's, it's real credit to you. And I know you're oncologist. I, I read something when you said that you, th together you're rewriting the textbooks. I love that. I think it's a great phrase um, because we can get quite hung up on statistics. And I, I use them when I talk um, because I think it sets a benchmark. But then I think it's also just it's only a reference point. Um, and I think if we try to work out what statistic we're going to be, it's, it's really hard to um, and let's face it none of us could predict this COVID thing or you know some people might argue that they could but the impact that it's having on us um, all of us and the way that we're rethinking our lives I think you know we're going to see a shift for many years to come in terms of the way that we live our life as a result so I kind of just say you kind of just have to dance through the storm um, and you do and you drink a lot of rosé for it as well.
<laughs> be present and booze. That's the takeaway. <laughs> be present and booze. You'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, I mean, you're a, you're a medical marvel. The way you talk, um, it's, it's actually quite difficult to remember everything that you're going through. And the way you're keeping fit is so inspiring. So I think you're amazing. And thank you so much for your time. Oh, no problem. Thanks for the chat. Thank you so much for watching this interview. If you liked it, please do click the button down below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. Next week, I am speaking to professional triathlete Matt Troutman from South Africa. He is an Ironman and 70.3 champion, and he's claimed those titles both sides of an accident that nearly ended his career. Definitely not one you want to miss. See you next week.